All right, last week we talked about microphones. Today we talk about what they record into. A lot of people who do YouTube videos, the camera is not far from them. They're either holding it on the end of their hand or it's on a tripod right here. If the camera is only three feet away from you, there's very few reasons not to just plug the microphone right into the camera. Now I know some people are going to say camera preamps are not as good. Yes, it's true. Cameras are made for video and picture taking. They're not really designed for audio, but most cameras nowadays are good enough so where you can take away the noise in the background and they're pretty darn good. You're gonna see comparisons today. But if your camera is going to be more than three feet away from you, it's gonna be quite a distance so you can get that nice blurry background or whatever. That's where recorders come in. And then we have so many to choose from here. And there's other reasons too. You might not even make a video. You might be a musician. You might be a guy dictating. You might be someone doing a voiceover. You, there's a lot of reasons why you wanna do audio. You might be recording nature stuff. What do you record audio into that's portable? So that's what we have here today is so many choices of what to record audio into. And they range in price from really cheap to insanely expensive as always. And I'm gonna give you the full list here of what they are and how, what they sound like. And again, just like in microphones, and uh, that's another thing. Remember that what I said about the combination of microphone and recorder is really important because you could have a really good expensive professional microphone that sounds really good with this recorder and not so good with this recorder. So I'm gonna have a link down below to a file that you can download that has, from my experience, which combinations sound really good. And there are professional recorders here that the sound, if you were to hear it right out of the recorder, it doesn't sound that great. It sounds kind of muffled and boring, just distant. and. Somebody who doesn't know what they're listening to would go, I don't want that, that sounds kind of bad. Uh, like I said in the last video, uh, just like in with the world of video, cinema log is gray and boring and flat and you have to bring out the full glory in post-processing. The same with recorders, the same with microphones. You have to be aware of that. You can't judge the quality of something based on how it sounds right out of the recorder. One guy asked me in the last video, he says, why are you including samples of post-processed stuff? I just wanna hear what it sounds like right out of the, the, the camera so I can base my decision. Well, you can't. Like right now, what I, the, can, the microphone that I, and, and the recorder that I've been using for the last four years sounds like this when you first hear it. It's really boring, it's really flat and distant and nobody would ever want that. That's because this is a professional recorder that requires a professional microphone that requires post-processing to make the full glory come out. So you can't really tell how amazing something will sound until you're finished. You know, this uh, what you record is unfinished work. Your judgment should be based on what the final thing sounds like when they're when everything is is done. Then you can hear them. So I'm going to include the raw recordings, what they sound like, and the post processing, a little sample of that. So you will get an idea of what it sounds like right out of the recorder and what it sounds like when you add some processing to it. And I'm gonna use the same microphone for all of them, just for fairness sake to compare them. And I'm gonna use the microphone I'm using right now. It's a DPA 6060, it's a really tiny lavalier mic. And I'm gonna stick it into every recorder here. Some of these sound pretty amazing, just right out of the, just straight out. They sound like I've already got processing on it. Some of these are discontinued, but there's lots of them out there and it's good for you. So you can get them on eBay for a lot less. I'm also going to record into a number of different types of cameras so you can hear what the difference is between the recorder and the camera. Or can you hear the difference? I'll already tell you the answer. You won't be able to tell much difference between things recorded into a camera and a recorder. Well then why use a portable recorder? Well, there's lots of reasons. One is convenience sake. Like right now, I don't have anything attaching me to the camera. There's no wireless signal, there's no cord, there's, there's no nothing. It's just recording right into a little recorder that's in my pocket and uh, I can walk 50 feet away. I could just, whatever. I. I you know, there's no connection between me and the camera, which makes life so much easier for me. I don't have to worry about a wireless signal. I don't have to worry about a transmitter or receiver crapping out on me. It's right there on me. The more professional things are, the higher up you go in the world of professional filmmaking, the more people record audio separate because you have more control of it that way. That's why in the world of filmmaking, you have an audio department, a video department, a lighting department, a costume department. You know, everybody, it's all car, uh, Carpent, carpent, uh, compartmentalized. What else? Uh, oh, 32 bit. Everybody's talking about 32 bit float. Like that's the new thing and you should only get 32 bit. That's not true. I have several 32 bit recorders here. I never use them. I don't need it. 
32-bit is a method of recording where you can be really loud or really quiet, doesn't matter, it, it doesn't distort, you can adjust it all in post. It's, it's a safety thing and it's good for people who are in some kind of environment or situation where you don't know if it's gonna be really loud or really quiet. Uh, well, then that's good, that's good. But I personally don't need it. I will record some examples for you today. And uh, size, size is really important to me. I like the smaller, the better. I like really, really tiny things that I can stick in my pocket or tape to someone's back or, you know, just hide. I like to hide things and make it really lightweight for traveling and really easy to use. I don't like big, heavy things in my pocket. So I like to choose smaller, more lightweight things. Um, so that's another factor here. But these are all good. All of these are pretty darn good or I wouldn't have them. So let's see if you can hear the differences. I think if you buy any of these, you'll be okay with them. So these are the ones that I recommend. So here we go. So what you're gonna hear from this moment on is the actual sound of the recording coming out of each recorder. Here we go. All right, let's start with the little original Zoom H1. This is a classic, it's really small and portable. It's easy to use and it's under $100. It's fun to hold in your hand because it's so small. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a Zoom H1 recording a DPA 6060 microphone. They have a newer one out, an H1N, which I'll get to in a second. It has an eighth inch 3.5 millimeter jack or you can use the built-in mics. It has a headphone jack, which is really cool. The only thing about this one is the menus are more difficult to use. The more the newer model, the H1N, one in the menus are easier to use but this is a classic and this is what it sounds like when you use the built-in microphones on a zoom h1 and this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the built-in microphones on a zoom h1 all right this is the little zoom h1n not h1n1 but h1n <laughs> it's 80 dollars. i like this one this is fun to use it's really easy to use it fits in your pocket to carry around it has plug-in power it records wave files up to 96k it has a 3.5 8 inch jack for external microphones it has a little dial on top so you can manually adjust the input gain but it also has auto level limiter low cut filter it has built-in stereo mics it's very easy to use the menu system is a lot easier to use than the original Zoom H1. I like this one. I think this was one that a lot of people would be happy with. And this is what it sounds like when you use the built-in microphones on the Zoom H1N. And this is what it sounds like when you use post-processing with the Zoom H1N with the DPA 6060 microphone. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the microphones on the Zoom H1N. All right, this is a really heavy duty one. It weighs a lot. It feels like a solid chunk of steel. It's an audio limited A10 and it costs $1,600. It's actually a UHF transmitter that has a micro SD card as a backup. So I just use that as a recorder. I don't even use it as a transmitter. The quality is really good. Oh, well, for that price, it should be. The menu is intuitive and it's pretty easy to learn. You cannot get the SD card out unless you take out the batteries. That's kind of annoying but it sounds really good. It has a time code generator. It runs on two AA batteries. And don't be fooled by the quiet sounding original audio. This is a professional unit. So this is what it sounds like when you do add post-processing to the Audio Limited A10, testing one, two, three, four, five. Oh, and it has a three pin limo connector, just like the Zaxcom. So you have to have an adapter, or if you're using DPA mics like I do, then you just have to have a micro dot to three pin limo adapter. You also need to convert the files before you can use them using their little converter app, which is really easy to use though. It's a high quality, rugged, bulletproof, easy to use recorder. It's just really expensive. All right, this is another really small pocket recorder. This is by a pro audio company called Electrosonics. This is the Electrosonics PDR, which stands for Portable Digital Recorder. It's a miniature body pack recorder that costs $800, which is probably too expensive for most people, but remember Electrosonics is for professional audio people. I like this one better than the $1,600 A10. It's half the price, much, much smaller and lighter, and easy easier to use. It comes with an M152 lav mic, but I use DPA mics like the 6060 I'm using right now. And of course you need to have an adapter because Electrosonics uses a TA5M connector. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to Electrosonics PDR recording a DPA 6060 mic. Testing one, two, three, four, five. This thing is very, very small and it only weighs two and a half ounces. It runs on one AAA battery, which lasts forever. It also records a minus 18 dB safety track and recordings can be reliably recovered even if the card is accidentally removed or the battery dies while the recording is in progress which is great and it's also really difficult to accidentally stop the recording you have to hold two of the buttons down at the same time for several seconds so you can just push record and put it in your pocket and forget about it this is a great recorder i like it
This little thing even has a headphone jack. I personally like the sound of the recordings from the Zaxcom recorder more than the Electrosonic, but the size and the ease of use of this one is great. The menu is a lot easier to use than the Zaxcom, and I think most people would be very happy with the quality of the Electrosonic's PDR. It's just expensive, $800. Some mics like the Sankin COS11D sound dull and boring with this recorder, while others like this DPA sound pretty good. Again, the combination of which microphone goes with which recorder does make a difference. All right, this is another friendly classic. It's a Tascam DR05. You can get them on eBay for a hundred bucks. Really easy, really friendly to use. It records 96K 24-bit stereo, has an eighth inch 3.5 millimeter input, a headphone jack, and it has a peak reduction function, which is different than auto gain. Plus it has a limiter and a low cut filter. It has a built in speaker, which is great. And it has a tripod mounting socket hole, which I think is really cool. It's really easy to use. I love the size and the shape and the way it feels in your hand. Here's what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a track recorded on the Tascam DR05 with a DPA 6060 microphone. All right, and this is what it sounds like when you use the built-in microphones on the Tascam DR05, holding it close to your mouth with a pop filter. Testing one, two, three, four, five, it sounds pretty darn good. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the built-in mic on the Tascam DR05. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Be sure to use a pop filter when you put a microphone close to your mouth. All right, this is a cute little XLR recorder that I really like. It's a Ceremonic SR VRM1 linear PCM field recorder, and they can be connected directly to an XLR mic. It provides 48 volt phantom power. Some recorders have really quiet headphone output, but this one has a nice loud headphone output. And I get really good quality recordings with this thing. I used to use this one a lot when I was using shotgun mics on a boom pole over my head. I just plug it onto the end of the shotgun so there was no cables or anything. It's really portable. This is great for when you're doing recordings on the street. You just plug it into the bottom of your microphone and the mic records right into this thing. No cords or anything. I love it. This is a great little device. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the Ceremonic XLR with a DPA 6060 microphone. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I like the Ceremonic XLR recorder much more than the Tascam DR10X. It's more powerful and it can provide power to a microphone. Ironically, the DR10X cannot provide power to a microphone. All right, this is a newer one that's causing quite a bit of a buzz. It's a Technical Sync Track E. It, this is the easiest thing in the world to use. There's only one button. You slide the button down to turn it on and you slide the button up to start recording. How easy is that? You don't have to worry about adjusting the level or the gain or anything. This is the easiest thing in the world to use. And it's really small so easy to use and really small and it's 32-bit float which means you cannot distort your audio by being too loud it's $350 which might be a little steep for some people but remember you're getting 32-bit float here you cannot distort your audio it comes included with a lavalier mic so it's ready to go it has a 3.5 millimeter locking connector which is great so your microphone cannot accidentally come out it has time code support. It records 48K in both 24 and 32 bit. And the 32 bit, of course, allows more headroom. You can do low level recordings, like really low volume recordings that can be brought up later, normalized, without raising the noise floor, which is great. And it's really hard to accidentally turn it off. You have to slide the button to the down position and hold it there for like four seconds. It does have a headphone jack, but you can only hear something when you're setting up. Once you start recording, you cannot hear what you're recording anymore. You'll probably freak out the first time you see and hear the track. It'll be so quiet and you'll go, oh no, it's too quiet. And if I boost it, I'll hear all kinds of noise. Well, fear not my friends, because this is the world of 32 bit. You can boost up the gain quite a bit and not hear any more noise floor. It's quite amazing. But I personally don't use 32 bit because I don't need it. I know how to record properly and my stuff almost never distorts. I personally do not run out and buy stuff because it has 32 bit. If you're just starting in audio and you have totally unexpected recording conditions, then and probably the 32-bit would be better for you. And the Tentacle Sync is a really easy to use one that is really good for that. I like this much better than the Zoom F2. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a Tentacle Sync track with a DPA 6060 microphone. Testing one, two, three, four, five. So it's the easiest to use, it's super small, and it has 32-bit float. Highly recommended. Tentacle Sync.
track E. All right, and this is the tiny little Tascam DR10L. This is a classic. You can get them for 150 bucks. It records broadcast wave with a safety track, meaning it records a second track much quieter, either minus 6 dB or minus 12 dB, which means if you have really loud moments that distort, you have the backup track to get those bits where it's not distorting. It records up to 10 hours on a single AAA battery, and there's no need to select inputs or tracks because, well, there's only one. It's very easy to use. It comes with an omnidirectional lav mic, but right now I'm using a DPA6060 mic going into the 8th inch 3.5 millimeter jack which happens to also have a locking thread which is great so the mic can't fall out. It has automatic gain control, a limiter, the micro SD can record up to 2 gigabytes. It weighs only 2.2 ounces and if the battery runs out in the middle of a recording the unit will automatically save the file before turning off so your take isn't lost. You can adjust the recording level. This little thing even has a headphone jack and you don't have to worry about it turning off accidentally while you're recording. So they thought this out really good. This is really, really small. It's not expensive. It's easy to use. And I think most people will be quite happy with this little guy. This is a classic. A lot of people love this little thing. It's a Tascam DR10L. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the little tiny Tascam DR10L with a DPA6060 microphone going into it. Testing one, two, three, four, five. All right, this is a Tascam DR40. This is another one of those ones I just can't get rid of. You can get them for like 80 bucks. This one has two XLR inputs, so I have my 6060 running into one of those, and this is what it sounds like. It records 96K 24-bit. I never use it, but I just can't get rid of it because it's just so cool looking. I like holding it in my hand. It's so practical. I don't know. I just love Tascam recorders. They're, they're just so cool. It has phantom power, two XLR inputs, and a mic line input, a headphone jack. It's a cool spacey color. I love it. And it has two built-in mics on top that you can move around, so let's try those. And this is what it sounds like when you use the built-in microphones on the Tascam DR40. This is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the built-in microphones on the Tascam DR40. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the Tascam DR40 with a DPA6060 microphone plugged into it. All right, this is the one I've personally been using for the last few years. It's a Zaxcom ZFR400. It costs $1,000, and unless you're a professional, I do not suggest you run out and get it. One of the main reasons I got this one is it is the very smallest recorder you can possibly get and it also happens to be professional. It's an ultra small body pack style portable digital recorder with a high strength impact resistant nylon polymer casing with rounded edges. This thing can handle just about anything. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a little Zaxcom ZFR400 with a DPA6060 microphone going into it. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's actually a transmitter designed to work with a Zax Zaxcom wireless system and it has a little micro SD in there to record stuff as a backup. So what I'm actually doing is using the transmitter's backup micro SD as a recorder. It has a patented system called Neverclip which uses two AD converters to extend the dynamic range to 128 decibels so there's never any limiter distortion. Zaxcom came out with Neverclip before other companies started coming out with 32-bit float. It's called Neverclip because your stuff never clips. It can be remotely triggered and adjusted like preamp, gain, time code, start and stop recording, and even playback mode without ever touching it. This is definitely a really good professional device. You can put this thing in your pocket and nobody would ever see it. You could stick this thing in your bra and nobody would ever see it. It's so small. It runs on a small NP50 battery which lasts 10 hours. This thing can run all day long. It can record up to 96 hours on a 16 gigabyte card. But now for the downside for most people. Like I said, it costs $1,000. It uses a three pin Limo connector which is like a mini XLR, but to use a standard TRS 8th inch 3.5 millimeter mic, you have to have a custom adapter made. A place like Gotham Sound can do that for you. There is no headphone jack, so you cannot hear what's recording unless you get a receiver, which costs at least another $500 on eBay. It does not record WAV or MP3 or anything normal. It records into a proprietary Zax format, which needs to be converted in a computer to WAV or MP3. All right, here's the procedure you got to go through to get a file out of the Zaxcom. You got to go down to this little app round down here. It's called a Zax Convert, which you open up. You get these two windows. You don't concern yourself with the black one. The white one is what you need. You click on this. You work your way down to the Zaxcom thing. You, you have these folders here, but you got to click on this one, the SN22, whatever it is. And then you, it loads all the segments over here. Then you go over here to this thing here. You uncheck the box 
click on the folder because if you have them all checked, these are all the previously recorded segments that I have, which you don't want any of those. You only want the recent one. So you uncheck that. You go down to the last one, which is the one that I just recorded. Then you got to pick the output folder. Uh, let's see here. What's it called? You pick the folder you want it to go into and then you push translate. And then down here, it's starting to translate, turning the Zax format into a WAV format in the folder. And up here, you can see it created a folder with that. And up here is now the WAV file that I just got transferred. So that's what you got to do to transfer a Zaxcom file into a WAV file. Another thing that might freak you out when you see the Zaxcom SD card, it, it looks like it's completely full. It's not. It formats the entire uh, micro SD into a proprietary code that only Zaxcom understands. So it looks like it's full, but it's really not. Anyway, so that's what you got to put up with every time you want to get a file out of the Zaxcom. The menu is difficult to remember. So the upside is it's the smallest recorder you can get. It's very professional. You cannot accidentally stop the recording by accidentally pushing a button or something. You have to hold down two specific buttons at the same time, hold them down for four seconds, and then you have to push a third button to confirm that you want to stop the recording. So it's really, really good for not accidentally stopping the recording. So anyway, this is the one I've been using. It's great for me. It took me a while to learn it. So unless you're a professional, I do not suggest you get it. It's kind of a steep learning curve. It's expensive. It has proprietary formats. It takes a while having to convert the files into something normal and the difficult menu system and stuff like that. And for most people, it's probably just too frustrating, but this is what pros use. And if you're a pro, I, I highly recommend it. But if you're just a normal YouTuber, uh, I think there's other ones that would probably be more up your alley, but people want to know. So here you go. All right, this is the new Zoom F2 32-bit recorder. It's really, really small, and it's pretty easy to use. And it does 32-bit distortion-free recording, so you can be really loud and it won't distort. It's $180, so it's almost half the price of the Tentacle Sync, but I like the Tentacle Sync more. If you can afford it, I would get the Tentacle Sync instead of the Zoom F2. That's just my personal opinion. The Zoom F2 has 3.5 millimeter locking connectors, which is great, so your mic can't accidentally come out. It has a locking headphone jack. There's no gain adjustment required again because it's 32-bit float. It does supply 2.5 volts plug-in power. It's one of the smallest recorders you can get other than the one that I use from Zaxcom. It uses two AAA batteries. It's really really hard to get the battery cover off. It has a rotating switch to turn it on and off and put it in the hold position. And even though it has a hold position because it's a lever I think it's easier to accidentally knock this thing and stop a recording accidentally with this one than with the tentacle sync or even the little Tascam DR10L which is a lot harder to accidentally turn off. But this is a wonderfully tiny, tiny little device. So if you want small, this is definitely small and it's only $180. You'll freak when you first see how quiet the recording is. Remember, it's 32 bit. That's what they kind of record like. You have to really boost the gain, but luckily and weirdly, it does not raise the noise floor. This is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the little tiny Zoom F2 using a DPA 6060 microphone. Testing one, two, three, four, five. All right, here's a field recorder that most people have probably never heard of. It's a Fostex FR2. LE. They obviously don't make this anymore, but I like it so much I got two of them. It was $600 when it came out. It was the middle ground between prosumer and professional. It uses compact flash memory cards, and it records in 96K 24-bit broadcast wave format. It has XLR inputs, 48-volt phantom power, and it sounds great. But I wasn't just happy with that. Just like people like to hot rod their cars, I hot rodded this thing. I sent it into a place called Ode Brothers Audio, which does circuit modifications, and they did an FR2LE Super Mod, which increases the clarity and detail for low noise and distortion. This modification is perfect for ENG applications that require improved vocal detail with a more natural tone. The Super Mod uses very low distortion FET op amps and HQ capacitors. I mean, these things are great right out of the box, but you know me, I'm always trying to see how far I can push something. I guess the best comparison is, you know how some people in the music industry like to use old tube amps instead of all digital stuff? Even though this thing is digital, it has kind of that analog warmth to it, which I really like. I really appreciate the subtle differences in some of this stuff, which is why I like the FR2 LE. And you can get them used for a hundred bucks on eBay because people just don't know what they are and they don't appreciate them. So for people in the know, this is quite a catch. Fostex FR2 LE. 
the sound quality is great right out of the box. It doesn't even need post-processing. But if you do add post-processing, this is what it sounds like if you add post-processing to a track recorded on a Fostex FR2LE Super Mod with a DPA 6060 microphone going into it. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, this is a professional unit. It's a Nagra 7 field recorder. It costs $2,500. It's a high-end recorder with Nagra's legendary preamps. Records up to 192 kilohertz. Has switchable sensitivities to accommodate all common microphones has touchscreen functionality, two XLR inputs, and yes, it's portable. It has a rechargeable battery. So if you want to know what Hollywood uses, here you go. And this is what it sounds like when you have post-processing added to a Nagra 7 with a DPA 6060 microphone going into it. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, here's the little brother, the Nagra SD. You want some Hollywood power in your hands? Here you go. They don't make this anymore, but even used, they're $800 on eBay. It's really rugged and professional. When I found this, I snatched up two of them because they were so good. It's a mini Nagra designed initially for journalism, but it can be used for any ultra-portable recording situation. It runs on two AA batteries, which run for 10 hours. It has a built-in speaker, comes with various types of microphones. It has an 8th inch 3.5 input jack, which even comes with an XLR adapter. And it comes with various types of microphones that you can plug into the top, which are amazing quality. Check this out. All right, here's the blue omnidirectional one on here. The sound quality is just amazing. I'm holding it right up to my mouth with a pop filter. I've done a lot of voiceovers with this thing. You can have this attachment unplugged until when you need it. Then you just add it on and you have an instant interview device that you can go up to people and do interviews with or do your own voiceovers with. It comes with four different really high quality add-on microphones. Cardioid, omnidirectional, stereo, mono. So if you want to interview somebody on the street, you just put on the appropriate microphone and hold it up to their mouth. These things sound good enough by themselves without any processing, but this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the add-on microphones. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a Nagra SD with a DPA 6060 microphone going into it. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And if you want something even more portable by Nagra, there's the Nagra Mezzo. This thing is like one of those things that doctors use to talk into to take notes. But it has a mic input and a line input and a headphone jack and built-in microphones. But it is a Nagra, so I had to get one just to try it out. I don't use this thing. It's just a little too consumerish for me, but it definitely fits in your pocket and um, it does work. So there you go, Nagra Mezzo. Here's what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the Nagra Mezzo with a DPA 6060 microphone. Testing one, two, three, four, five. But it costs around $350. Personally, I think you can get a lot more for your money with some of the other recorders in this video. All right, this next one is one of my favorites. It's a Roland R05. I love the size, I love the shape. It's just so friendly in so many ways. You can get them used on eBay for 150 bucks. It records uncompressed 96K 24-bit, which is pretty revolutionary for the time it came out. It has built-in stereo mics, which are actually pretty good quality, and they don't stick up in weird angles like some of these other recorders. It can record over 16 hours of continuous recording in both WAV or MP3. It has what's called rehearsal mode, so it can learn your levels in the environment in which you're shooting and pick the best scenario for recording for you. Actually really smart. It has buttons on the back for mic gain, limiter, low cut. I like the display. It's easy to use. The size is just perfect. I love the size and the th there's everything about this thing. I love it. So I actually went on eBay and bought a couple more because I know you guys were going to go out and buy some and there'd be none left. So I quickly bought a couple more just for myself. But I love this thing. This thing is just perfect. I love it. And this is what the built-in stereo mic sound like when you hold it up to someone's mouth. It's really great for interviews. You just whip it out of your pocket and hold it up to someone's mouth. I do suggest you use a pop filter whenever possible. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the built-in microphones on the Roland R05. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a Roland R05 using a DPA 6060 microphone. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But wait, they have a newer one also. This is the Roland R07. This one costs $199. This is just like the R05, but it's a newer model. It's a little more spacey, futuristic looking. So this is what the built-in mic sound like on the Roland R07. Testing one, two, three, four, five. All the Roland recorders sound so good, they don't even need post-processing. But if you do want post-processing, this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the Roland R07 with a DPA 6060 microphone. Testing one, two, three. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the Roland 
Roland R07 built-in mics. All right, this is a Roland R26. I love Roland. They make stuff for musicians, but it works really well for voice recordings and other stuff too. You know how I keep saying how the same microphone can sound different depending on what you are recording into? In my last video where I played samples of microphone recordings, some people commented on how the XLR version sounded better than the 8th inch versions. Well, that's because the camera I was recording into, the A7S 3 does not have an XLR input. So I had to record my XLR microphones into something else, and that something else was the Roland R26. And you could really hear the difference between recording into a camera and recording into a dedicated recorder. And one of my favorite XLR recorders is the Roland R26. This thing also has a touch screen, which is rare for recorders. It's really easy to use, and it's actually quite fun to use. I find hours of enjoyment playing with this touchscreen. So whenever I do on-location portable XLR recordings, I almost always use the Roland R26 or the Little Ceremonic XLR. For home or studio recordings, I use the Nagra 7. And this is what it sounds like when you use the built-in microphones on the Roland R26. Sounds pretty amazing. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the built-in microphones on the Roland R26. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a track recorded on the Roland R26 with a DPA 6060 microphone going into it. All right, here's another one that I will not part with. It's a Sony PCM D100. This is a really high-end recorder. They don't make these anymore, but even used, they're $1,000. It records 192 two kilohertz 24-bit files. It does not have any XLR input. It only has a 8th inch 3.5 millimeter jack. It also has a line in jack and it has a line out and a headphone jack. You adjust your input gain with a dial on the side, which can be accidentally bumped, so I don't like that. It has another dial on the other side for headphone volume. It's pretty easy to use and uh, the quality is just really, really good really good. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the Sony PCM D100 with a DPA 6060 mic going into it. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it has two built-in mics on the top that you can swivel, which is kind of cool. So this is what those sound like. All right, now I'm using the built-in microphones that come with the Sony D100. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the built-in microphones with the Sony D100. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, this is a little Zoom F1 with my lavalier microphone plugged into it. It also has a headphone jack. It has an optional shotgun mic, the SGH6, which you can attach to it. I reviewed that in the last video. It's small. It looks futuristic. It can be used in science fiction movies as a prop. It costs about $170. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to the Zoom F1 with the 6060 going into it. One thing about the F1 that's a real deal breaker is that battery door accidentally pops open a lot. And when that happens, there's no more power and then you just lost everything. Not good. All right, this is the Zoom H2N. I bought it because it looks cool. It looks like a little retro radio. I buy cool looking things. But upon purchasing it, I regretted the purchase. This thing is horrible to use. It has the worst way of navigating through a menu. It's just frustrating in so many ways. I don't even want to list them all. So I do not suggest getting the Zoom H2N. Yuck. So let's run through some cameras here. This is the Sony a7S 3 This is one of the high-end DSLR style cameras that people use to take videos. And this is what it sounds like when you plug a DPA 6060 right into a Sony a7S 3 And this is what it sounds like when you plug a DPA 6060 right into a Sony a7S 3 This is my favorite video recording full-frame camera, the Sony a7C. I have several of these. I like this camera and I am recording into it right now. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And this is what it sounds like when you add post processing to a Sony A7C with a DPA 6060 microphone going into it. All right, this is a Panasonic Lumix G7, another one of my favorite micro four thirds interchangeable lens cameras that takes great video. And obviously, it has a mic jack. This is what it sounds like. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And this is what it sounds like when you add post processing to a Panasonic Lumix G7 with a DPA 6060 microphone going into it. Testing one, two, three, four, five. All right, now I'm recording to a Panasonic Lumix G100. Yes, that has a mic input also. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a little Panasonic Lumix G100 with a DPA 6060 microphone going into it. All right, now we're going to my favorite little Sony RX100 Mark VII pocket camera. Yes, it has a mic input. So if you want portability and high quality, nothing beats the RX100. I love this little camera. I use it for doing my little five-minute videos when I'm traveling. And the audio quality is pretty darn good. 
good. This is the RX100 Mark 7. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a Sony RX100 Mark 7 with a DPA 6060 microphone going into it. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is a Panasonic VX981 camcorder, which I reviewed in a previous video. This is a wonderful 4K camcorder. It does have a mic jack, and this is what it sounds like when you put a microphone into the Panasonic Lumix VX981. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a Panasonic VX981 with a DPA 6060 microphone going into it. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alright, this is a Sony Z90V 1-inch camcorder with the microphone plugged into the microphone jack. This is what it sounds like. And this is what it sounds like when you add post-processing to a Sony Z90V camcorder with a DPA 6060 microphone going into it. Alright, so one of the best ones that I recommend. Well, the best one is obviously the Nagra 7, but I don't think several thousand dollars is what most people have in their pockets for something like this. So here's my suggestions, and this is just based on what I have here, but from the ones that I've showed you today, the best pocket size ones are the Nagra SD, the Roland R05, and the Roland R07. The best really small super tiny ones are the Zaxcom ZFR400, but again, that's too expensive for most people. The Electrosonics PDR, that's still a little too expensive for most people, and the tiny Tascam DR10L. Now that one is totally affordable for almost anybody. And the best 32-bit float recorder that I tested was the Tentacle Sync Track E. And the best XLR recorders is the Roland R26 and the Ceramonic VRM1. And like you saw in this video, pretty much any camera or camcorder nowadays sound pretty darn good. I'm not counting action cams or little things like that but a normal camera or camcorder are pretty good audio recorders. So don't let those audio files scare you and make you feel bad when they say that preamps and cameras are not good enough. I mean, come on, on YouTube, most people can't hear the difference and they don't care. That little bit you can clean up and post easily, so if you've got a decent camera, you're probably good enough. And there's another one that I wanted to show you, but it didn't arrive yet. I was hoping it was gonna arrive before I made the video. Uh, but I'm pretty much sure that it's going to sound really good, so I'm going to go out on a limb and say that uh, it's recommended also, and that is a DJI wireless microphone system. Now, I know we're getting into wireless systems next time, but like I said here, some of these are wireless transmitters that I don't use as a transmitter. They have a little micro SD card in there as a backup track in case something happens. Well, that's what I like to do. I like to, as a matter of fact, the thing I'm using right now. This is actually a wireless transmitter, but I don't use it as a transmitter. I use it as a recording device because there's a little SD card that records in there. And the same thing with uh, the A10 and the Electrosonics PDF. What else? That's it. That's the world of audio recorders from my end. Uh, this is, I know there's a lot more out there. There's thousands of them. There are so many recorders out there. This is just what I have, but it should give you a pretty good idea. Um, so. There you go, the world of audio recorders. Next up, next week, we're going to be having wireless uh, systems. So that's a way of sending audio from the recorder to the camera wirelessly. That's gonna be a fun playing around thing. I don't use wireless systems that much, hardly ever anymore, but they're fun to play with. And uh, so next week, it'll be wireless audio. So I hope you enjoyed this, got something out of it. And next week, we get into wireless systems. So I hope you're enjoying my audio series. I'll see you next week.